Welcome back friends to the shop. I think I set my tripod a little bit low there. All right, so this is a video I, I guess I'm making because of uh, so many recommendations that came from you guys in the comments. And I don't know why I didn't think of this myself, but I was, I ran out of those square headed bolts. Remember the old fashioned style bolt, bolts and I was talking about sourcing them somewhere. Well, you guys all pointed out to me, why don't you just make your own? Just take a hex bolt and see if you can't reproduce that uh, quick and easy uh, with the wood fired forge. So uh, let's try that today. All right, pull up a seat, make yourself comfortable. I gotta start talking. I gotta make it to 10 minutes so I can get paid by the unwashed masses out there. So what are we gonna do here? We're going to try to duplicate this. This is the only one I could find there, uh, but of course it's the wrong size, but this is the one I typically use, these little guys. So the idea is can we throw those in the forge? I think the biggest problem is gonna be finding them. Just rounding them up. I don't know of a way where I could kind of keep them all together and heat them. They don't have to be super hot, but what we wanna do is I guess take that and just start flattening those sides until we get it perfectly square or square enough. I guess square enough to that we can get a set of bolt rounders on it or adjustable wrench or something. Uh, I, I wonder, be curious to see how uh, uniform I can make them. So let's take a couple, let's throw them in the forge and burn that. I'm gonna burn that galvanizing out. I'll just leave for a while, let those burn out and vent. vent. And then we'll get to work on it. I just built a little fire. Uh, today uh, since we're, I knew we were just going to be doing these bolts so let's let's bring those hot coals this has been in here burning for an hour or so let's bring those hot coals up and get some air in them and that way we can uh, kind of keep track of those little tiny bolts I'm not really sure how we're going to find this thing but uh, <laughs> we'll uh I guess it'll just fall down in there. We'll see. See what happens. It was actually quite easy to find. So I guess we'll just uh, lay it on one of the flats. Oh, it's very... I don't have the best tongs. I got kind of a... And all around like a looks like a multi-tool of tongs, I think. I think I I think I've turned it from just into something round here. Let's, let's keep at it. Let's try that again. That first attempt was pathetic. I got a, a diamond more than more than anything else. Oh, it's the tongs. The tongs just won't close tight enough to hold it steady like I need it. Oh goodness, I missed all together. This is, this is just, look at that. That's not very good. You know, I'm gonna try something bigger. I think this is just a little bit too small at my, my current level of skill. Let's try this again with a, a big one, something we can get a hold of this time. I think we'll have a better luck. Let's try a bigger one here, not get so carried away. So I guess you flat, I guess you do want to flat the corners. That's where I went wrong. I did it, I did the wrong side. Interesting. Well, it looks cool. Okay, so I smashed it too hard. You know what I need to do is to make one of those deals. What do you call that deal? That uh, there's like a little tool that slides down in there so you can flatten the, the shoulders on there. See how those are round? Right there, how I did that? That's not good because the uh, it's gonna sit up high and you're gonna have a big gap on your work. So you, I've, we gotta build something that's the size of the shank right here. That's like a heavy plate steel with a hole drilled in it. And then we can heat that one time and smash that down flat. And then you can still see we got the grade marks in there. We don't want that. Smash, anyway, smash that down flat and even that out. But that's totally very simple to do. I did, what I did wrong is I didn't put it on the up on its nose there. It's up on its toes, as my granddad used to say. <laughs> he was never, my granddad was never very, um, he didn't have a lot of opinions, you know, about, about things. But when it came to vehicles, he did, because he was a Ford man, you know, he worked for Ford his whole life. My family actually, I believe, the story goes, had the first dealership in Oklahoma. Uh, and I'll tell you a story about that. Well, my granddad almost got robbed in Detroit. 
Uh, it, but the point was, is uh, what was the point? What were we talking about? It was cars. Car, the car he didn't like. That's what I was going to tell you about. The, uh, he was a Ford guy through and through. The first car, my first car was a, 19, I think it was a 1973 Dodge Challenger. And it had, I wish I still had that car. It was a canary yellow with a black Landu top and the rally stripes and the black diamond. It was really nice. Nice interior. A beautiful car. But when I pulled that into his yard, I wanted, there was, I was having problems with the brake, front brake, some brake caliper or something. And he just kind of just sneered at it. You know, he didn't want anything to do with, with that car. It was, he did not like working on Chrysler or General Motors. He was a Ford guy. Uh, but the car that he just disdained was the PT Cruiser. He, every time I would see it, I was with him and we would see one of those, he would just shake his head and just say that that is the most horrible thing he'd ever seen. I said, what is, what's wrong with it? He said, it looks like a bird dog with its, uh, with its nose down, sniff, you know, on the trail of something. And I can never look at a PT Cruiser the same after that, so I thought that was pretty funny. But speaking of which, so remember the other day I was talking about uh, how Granddad and I used to build the, the old spark plug cars? Uh, my parents had watched that video, and they, they actually had one and some, some stuff I had stored over there, and I found one. So one actually survives. And this was the one, this was inspired by me here when I was, because I, Granddad was putting the little wheels on there. The, the, the nuts were all the same size, and it looked kind of like, uh, like an Indy car. But I thought a dragster would be cooler, so he started putting big ones on there. And then I, uh, my custom paint, can you see that? It's not very good. Bla oh, how about the white walls? Yeah, white wall. Dripping white walls there. Nice, huh? But that, that was kind of fun to have. It's even got a roll bar on it. And the little ball bearing, he would take the ball bearings. He'd save everything, save the ball bearings and um, take them out of the races. And he's braised that on top of there with a little tiny little roll bar and a spark plug in the back. Proper orientation, you see that? That's pretty fun to have. Maybe we should, we should do a video maybe trying to make one of these. Uh, do that with Jack. That'd be kind of fun. So, uh, yeah, yeah, no problem. You can do the square heads, simple enough. We just need to make that one tool. I looked around for, uh, uh, I wanted like a big heavy chunk, like maybe like quarter inch or thicker or, or even half, and drilled those holes in there, maybe like quarter, five sixteenths, three eighths, seven and a half, so that if you do want to make your own square headed nuts, you can simply drop those in there on that heavy metal and then smash it on the top and then even that out. And then you're going to have a really cool looking uh, square custom made one. You don't have to worry about special ordering something. So yeah, thanks for the tip on that. That's going to be really helpful and something that I'll use a lot because I've got a whole bunch of projects I did around here and I put drywall screws and I just, I just, that's just heresy, heresy. All right. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys on the next video. Here comes Jack. He's going to hit the box. box. Nice. Are you going to hit a box? Next time. All right. Are you? Yeah. How was it? It was fine. Was it I gnarly? Had to, I had to pop before I hit it. <laughs> Yeah, there's a little gap between the box and the snow. All right, you gonna drop in?
<laughs> that was not what I was hoping for. Call <laughs> that a credit card error. That's a flat landing. <laughs>